have an interesting case study on transits. I'll take a quick look at my chart and why I got sick in India. And also why I'm meeting with my guru now. And how you can look at your chart and read the current sky and the transits. So check it out. Hey, it's Sam. And just with a quick... Uh, sort of case study um, to show a little bit of how you can read transits. Um, I'm going to be using my chart as a bit of a case study, pardon that um, indulgence, but this is my chart, July 2nd, 1963, 5 a.m., Annapolis, Maryland. You can see I got this explosion of planets here in, in uh, Gemini in the first, Venus, Mercury, Ascendant, um, Ascendant Sun, Rahu. But in particular, you want to look at the moon. Moon is 25 of Libra, right? Vishaka Nakshatra. And here's the way that you look at transits. You want to measure transits from the ascendant, from the lagna, not from the moon. Okay. Now you can also notice some, you know, some very important things from the moon because it is the mind. It's the literally like the mind, and the, you know, like how you feel emotionally and psychologically. We look at transits now. You'll you'll notice we have this moon here at 25, and look at Mars in the sky right now, 25, right on the right on my natal moon, and Jupiter 24, 14. So both Jupiter and Mars are right on my natal moon. So Mars give me a bit of a headache, right? I've had a headache the last couple of days. I even got a little fever blister here because I got a little bit of a cold here. It's not a cold, um, but I'm in India and it's a little bit of a, um, <clears throat> there's always little things going around. I don't get really sick. What I what winds up happening is I'll get tired for a couple days, sort of tired and very small symptoms of something. And then I'll get like one of these fever blisters because my immune system has worked really hard to like sort of kick its butt. So it's not even much of one, it's just a sort of little bit of a fever blister on my lip, which is actually the second house, the face, and the moon is the second house ruler. So you see Mars right on the moon and Jupiter very close. But you want to understand, Jupiter is going over my moon in the fifth house. So Jupiter is what? Guru. So I'm here with my guru, right? Last time when Jupiter went through the first house, went through my first house and went over all these planets, I also came to India to see my guru. So here it is going over the moon. Last time I was, last time Jupiter went over my moon is when I really started doing Vedic astrology, like not just for a living, but I started teaching a lot more. That was 12 years ago, 2006. So I've been teaching full time, been making a living teaching and doing readings since 2004, but mostly as a teacher primarily with a primary focus on teaching and writing books and whatnot. My first book was published in 2005, but my um, teaching career started in, in earnest and with full focus and dedication in 2006, last time Jupiter went over my moon. So that's 12 years. You should think about that, by the way. You're watching all these videos on YouTube with, you know, it seems like everybody with a YouTube channel to call themselves a Vedic astrologer and it's like, okay, I'm a Vedic astrologer too, even though, okay, how many years have you done it? How many years have you done it full time? How many conferences have you taught at? How many, anyway, I'm not trying to, you know, it's not like braggadocious, but I'm saying you should pay attention to those things. They are important. They used to really matter. They don't matter as much in this world now because we live in a kind of <clears throat> social media world where Again, it's sort of like anybody with a channel can say, oh, I'm this now. But anyway, so last time Jupiter went over my moon, 2004, or, um, no, 2006, sorry. 2006, that's when I started doing my, the first version of my certification course and other things. So I've been doing it a long time. And now, again, we have that recurrence transit. Jupiter's back right on top of the moon. And Mars is right on the moon too, and I have been having a bit of a headache and like a cold sore on the lip. The other thing is you see these planets opposite 
those planets in my first house, these oppositions, right? So you see I have Venus, Mercury, and the Ascendant are all within the first six degrees of Gemini. Then you see Saturn is at eight degrees, so it just passed the opposition to my Ascendant, but Mercury, 355, right opposite my natal Mercury at 310 and very close to the direct opposition for my Ascendant. So it's in the seventh house and it's aspecting back on these planets in my Ascendant. So I've recently gotten some really exciting news about my career, about my work as a teacher um, the last couple days, last few days. One of the reasons I'm here in India, certainly to see my guru, but also because I have some other business with some other um, pretty important people here in India. And more, you'll find out more about that later. I was supposed to teach at a conference in Calcutta um, at the end of January and into early February, but I had to cancel because of this other um, activity, this other thing that I have going. And um, it was a pretty well-known conference in India. Um, but I backed out because I had this other meeting that was um, a lot more um, a lot more beneficial. Um, not just to my career, but to the world as far as um, its importance. So um, that's what brought me to India, teaching in a conference and then seeing my guru. So I decided just to stay extra. But this is a good way to see transits. Mars right on my moon, 25. And the moon is not just the face in general, but for me, for Gemini, it's the second house ruler, which is also the face. So the moon is important for the face and the head especially for Gemini, it's literally the mind, but for Gemini, it's the second house ruler, which is literally the face. So Mars is there, getting like a fever blister, got a little bit of, um, you know, intense, you know, like a little bit of a fever, a little bit of a headache. Mars is actually related to headaches. And then Jupiter is also there, which has to do with being with my guru. It's been a very inspiring time, amazing um, time to spend with Amma. By the way, someone asked me before, who's my guru? It's Amachi. Mata Amartanandamai, I'm in Kerala. And if you don't know who Amma is, she's the one who hugs people. But again, that's a real, that doesn't sum up what Amma does. Amma literally sits up to 16, I mean literally up to 24 hours straight. But since I've been here, I've seen her sit for no less than 14 hours straight. Like, you know, she'll do that four days out of the week. Literally sitting, um... If she gets up maybe once to go to the bathroom, it's unusual. She'll usually sit and not even get up and take a break for like 14, 16 hours embracing people. Again, it's, you know, hugging people is not really what it is. It's consoling them. Especially you see here in India, those of you who have seen Alma in the United States, you see it as well, like she'll console people who are upset. Here in India, it's much different. You know, people are coming up crying. and I mean, it's a, you know, it's a relative, it's still quite a lot of poor people and there's also a lot of educated people in all, you know, obviously. But so Amma really sits down with people and talks to them, talks about their family, you know, consoles people and and really meets them. And it's so unusual for a Sadhguru to do that. Usually you can't get anywhere near them. They might have a program once in a while, but to sit there and like hug people, it's pretty amazing. By the way, that's just what Amma does. All the great gurus do what they do, but that's um, that's the way Amma gives her teaching. Not only that, though, beautiful darshan, I mean, beautiful satsangs where there's wonderful lectures, um, just great examples of the teachings in action. Um, you know, she's a living embodiment of everything that's in the scriptures. You know, the scriptures are dry. They try to contain and they try to evoke what a true living master is like what, what a master does. And it's it really impossible to do because a master, just like a book can't convey a person, a book about a person is always going to be less alive and real. Sometimes the book makes the person better. There's no way that you could really quite improve on what Amma does because it's timeless and it's so um, kind of sort of like a miracle because you really can't imagine that someone could expend that much energy, even once. I don't know anyone else ever who has sat 
16 hours a day hugging people day after day or even once in a while without eating or going to the bathroom or anything else, especially in India where it's hot and everybody's uncomfortable and she's just like happy as can be. Anyway, so you see that here in my chart. I've come here, spent time with Amma, um, my guru. It's shown a resurgence in my teaching with Jupiter going over my moon. And of course, it's also my fifth house moon. But I got this bit of a headache right now. I have a bit of a health thing with Mars also there. Again, they're both on my moon. And then you also see Saturn has been going through my seventh house, aspecting all those planets back in the first house. Mercury is also aspecting by exact degree and whatnot. So thought I'd do a quick um, update to show you how transits can work, how you can look at your chart for transits. Look and see when planets are moving over different natal planets, and especially by house and by house ruler as well. Moon rules the second house, right? You can even look at the fact that Mars is the sixth and eleventh house ruler for Gemini, because it's from the Gemini ascendant. And Jupiter is the fourth and seventh, I'm sorry, the seventh and tenth house ruler who is going over. So seventh house is partner. I'm actually here with partner and tenth house which is career. All these things are also being shown in my trip here, here with a partner and with career being on the line as well. So this, this, it works really well um, and you can, these are the kinds of things that, you, that if you're following all these YouTube astrologers and they're talking about all of these complicated, I mean, gosh, I, I mean, it's fine that people are talking about, you know, complicated things these days. I'd really like to see more charts, though. I just hear a lot of complicated theorizing, particularly about nakshatras and this complicated thing and this complicated thing, and nothing's really shown in a chart. But those are subtleties, and they are. They're subtleties. They can, they can show you nuances of things. The biggest things are shown with the most immediate and most important and most obvious, just like anything else, right? Without getting too off on that, but... Rather than getting so into the weeds of this complicated thing, you can see usually the most important and obvious things in someone's life by the most obvious thing. Ah, a planet is going over another one. Da-da. Especially if it's a Dasha planet or whatever. So, anyway, um, I'll be doing more updates from India now that i got my internet working. And hope you're well.